Hey, everyone. Welcome into our latest Trade to Black podcast. Thanks for checking in. Big podcast here today. There's a big announcement last week regarding an ATM, a canopy growth up to $250 million. A lot of questions that a lot of you were asking about the timing of it all. Well, big show here today. We're going to bring in the CEO, David Klein. But before we do that, let's welcome in TDR co-host Anthony Varel. Good Thursday afternoon to you. How are things? Uh, things are good. It finally stopped raining and uh, the, the sun's out. Yeah, I haven't seen the sun since Monday. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's good. Panthers play tonight. Pumped to uh, get another W under our belt and hopefully bring this cup home. What do you think you get as far as uh, rain? How many days in Florida? Uh, we got about a foot. We got about a foot in the last three days. Well, I'll never forget last year and I was there back in what, April at the Benzenga conference. What was their 30 Same. inches of rain? Oh, was it that kind? It was that, it was that kind oh. of rain. Not as bad, but it was that kind of rain. Wow. Yeah. All right. Big podcast here this afternoon as we welcome back in the CEO of Canopy Growth, which trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol CGC. David Klein, happy Thursday. How are things? Things are great. Uh, you know, a lot of momentum at our company after a lot of frustration with the regulatory world over the last couple of years. So, yeah, things are great. A lot of moving parts if we continue to have these conversations with you. But uh, I obviously like the uh, Nancy and I appreciate with our audience, the availability to kind of like walk people through because there's a lot of moving parts. We want to get into a lot of stuff pertaining to CUSA, not to mention the Ohio market that's going live this month. So big opportunity, obviously, with that acreage. Uh, acquisition. But first thing I want to touch on was the announcement from last week involving your uh, plan to raise up to $250 million via an ATM market equity program. With the program, an announcement, it doesn't require, and I think I've mentioned this a few times, to, uh, I guess, require the funds immediately. Uh, you will control the timing of it all, but haven't yet outlined when you plan to issue and sell the issue, uh, the shares, I should say. So overall, I would say the announcement receives some mixed reactions from the investment community. Last time you were on, you did highlight how you had 200 million in the bank, no material debt due until March of 2026. So there are, there are investments, are investors out there that are concerned about possible future dilution. So why did this announcement make sense now? And really why the decision was overall made right now? It's really about flexibility. Um, you know, as, as, as I said, last time we have uh, you know, just under $200 million of cash on our books. We have no material debt due until 2026. Uh, but but there's a, there are a lot of opportunities uh, out there uh, in the world that we want to be able to take advantage of, in particular in the in the U.S. market. Yep. Um, and, and, and it gives us flexibility. Uh, uh, we've paid off uh, over a billion dollars worth of debt in, in the last year. And so, you know, we feel like we have a clean balance sheet and this is a this is just a good time to to um, to create that flexibility for ourselves. There's no requirement that we that we draw it down uh, literally ever, uh, and we can do it kind of at our own pace. And so, uh, yeah, it's really about flexibility. Okay, makes sense. Go ahead, Anthony. So, so with the amalgamation of the assets in CUSA, I know it's uh, Jet Jetty Jetty's acquired two thirds. No, it's Wana. Is two thirds or Jetty's two thirds? So one is two. One is it's two. One two is, of the it's companies Jetty's yeah. Jet, Jet fully acquired. One is two thirds. Acreage is underway, um, with the deadline being potentially mid twenty twenty five. Canopy's flushed with cash right now from, in, in the mothership, and then we have CUSA. How should we be thinking about these things from a capital allocation perspective? Yeah. Can capital flow down from Canopy Growth into CUSA um, to be used as strategic capital within those assets? Or are they kind of on an island and they'll raise as need be? And the other two companies, from my understanding, already have a decent amount of cash in them. Yeah. So, so I would say, you know, the best way to think about it is the U.S. market is the market that gives you the best returns right now. And so, from a capital allocation at CUSA, um, we'll be focused on making proper investments, uh, you know, within the CUSA businesses to drive as much growth as possible. Uh, in terms of capital moving back and forth. Um, one, one of the reasons we, we, we put in place the, the, the debt, uh, you know, we, we bought $100 million worth of acreages debt. That was to clean up their balance sheet, allow them to really get aggressive in a state like Ohio. Uh, but, it, but it also creates uh, a liability from acreage to Canopy that there are rules in terms of how we can move cash back and forth. But but yeah. we have, a, you know, we have a debt instrument. You almost have to think about that as an intercompany debt. 
uh, by the time we close, we have a dead instrument between the organizations, which could be really, really useful for us. Hmm. And then moving forward, I mean, with the what should we expect to see as far as the CUSA numbers go? I mean, we've talked about it. They're obviously going to be unconsolidated until an unknown uh, or an, an unknown time. I mean, when should we see the numbers um, actually reported on a quarter? Yeah, we're going we're to work with CUSA to have CUSA, um, you know, almost as a private entity, try to try to try to pull their numbers together uh, and. Uh, we'll be very transparent about what those uh, what their performance is. Of course, you'll, we'll still see acreage reporting until we ultimately close. Yeah. Yeah. And then, as soon as we can, uh, as soon as as soon as we get the uh, the CUSA entities closed, we'll provide supplemental disclosures in our quarterly filings. Right, but okay. uh, we we need to get uh, you know, as you said, like Jetty is closed. Uh, two of the three entities that wanna are closed. Yes. Um, so, so I wouldn't expect that it'll be in this quarter's reporting, but as soon thereafter as possible. But again, in the meantime, we're going to try to be as as uh, transparent as possible, coming from the CUSA perspective. You know, we we've always talked about structure with a lot of these, you know, different properties. But you know, we look at. I'd like to get an idea of like evolution and what CUSA looks like, because like you said, like. The, the jetty acquisition is um, complete. Two thirds of one is complete and will be done by the rest of the summer. And then obviously acreage is underway. So based off of that, maybe share with us what CUSA is going to look like. What's the evolution here? Because we've learned a lot about structure, but the overall vision as you merge all these three entities together. It's probably why I just feel so, you know, like happy to go to work every day right now because we're no longer talking about the structure because it never was about the structure. It was right. about taking really strong brands like Wana, really strong and capable brands like, like Jetty, uh, building on its you know, California heritage uh, with solventless extraction and taking the strength of acreage in markets, uh, the, those, those strong markets like New Jersey, having uh, a lot of capability for them uh, to grow their business in New York. And New York seems to be rationalizing a little bit right now. And so, so we think that's gonna be really good. Uh, couldn't be more excited about what's happening uh, in Ohio in the positioning of acreage in yeah. that Ohio market. And then, you know, Pennsylvania is uh, coming along uh, here in the background toward, uh, you know, toward, toward uh, you know, more open markets. So, so it was always about putting those businesses together and getting uh, them working together to bring the brands uh, in market kind of in the same sales bag, if you will. Wana and Jetty are already starting to do that work in a place like New York. Um, we'll add acreage to that over time. And then, and then, yeah, there are synergies to be had because acreage is, will no longer be a public company, so we don't have to pay those costs. But it really is about bringing the brands together and really trying to drive that kind of top-line brand story across the markets. Time flies, doesn't it? I remember when this originally was announced yeah. back in 2019, and here we are five years later, but uh, onwards and upwards. But yeah, I understand why you think about just the pause momentum that gets you excited because when you talk about these markets, it's what gets people up every single day, you know, seeing where the market's performing because this is the interest levels of the industry. And as much as we've seen tremendous growth, when you factor in Ohio and even Pennsylvania, those two alone, those are massive growth markets. And, uh, who knows what happens to Pennsylvania? I'm not sure if you've heard much development there, but Ohio's about to go live. So in your view and your eyes, like when you look at acreage and the opportunity that it does present, like, I guess, what do you envision as far as like how this is going to perform and the opportunity it does present for uh, the company? You know, acreage uh, already punches above their weight in the medical market in terms yeah. of, you know, overall market share. Um, I think the team that acreage has in in Ohio is is really strong. I had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago to visit the grow facility. It's uh, uh, the, the 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 weed looks great, uh, which is which is where it all starts, right? And the, the stores look uh, the stores look good. So uh, you know, I'm I'm really excited to see what happens when uh, you know when the market opens and you know inside of two weeks already. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't wait uh, with with it, with everybody else really to watch what happens in Ohio. But I, I think it's going to be it's going to be fascinating. Do you have any expectations going into this? Yeah, look, I, I think for from from my perspective, uh, the, the work for CUSA now becomes operational excellence. It's okay. some of the work that we had to go through in, in Canada, you know, it was 
at first it's easy to sell cannabis to consumers when there's not enough uh, product available, but then you have yeah. to actually, you have to grow good weed and you have to know what that is and you have to consistently produce it. Uh, we, we've been down that path in Canada and, you know, I'm, I'm, I believe that acreage is, is going down that path right now. And uh, I don't think we'll have those kind of growing pains in Ohio, by the way, but I, I do believe that uh, acreage has uh, has some ground that they can cover in some of the other markets they're in to 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 bring up the quality of their product and to um, uh, you know and to really start to hit some home runs instead of singles yeah. and I I think we're 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 on the verge of that happening. Hmm. Are Wana are Wana and Jetty currently being sold in Ohio or are those is that a market that you, they're going to expand into? Um, yeah. So via- so. Yeah, so one is uh, one is one is there, um, but you know it's a game changer when 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 you get to um, adult use, and uh, we would like to have Jetty in all of the markets that we that acreage is in uh, as soon as possible. It'll take a little while to get that done, but the plan is to have uh, to have Jetty in all of those markets as soon as we can. And then also, I know as part of the acreage closing, or not closing, but as part of the acreage. Um, deal finalizing. I mean, I know that we saw in there that there was a date for a potential close mid-2025. I'm assuming it's in Canopy Growth's best interest and Cuse's best interest to get it done. Let's, I don't want to say as soon as possible, but get done with a certain amount of haste. Um, How should we be looking at that? Is that mid-2025 realistic and kind of like a target date? Or is that just giving you guys room to, to progress and really get this done and the nuance that comes with tucking in a publicly traded company and then dealing with all of the baggage that comes with that? Yeah, so so two two like points that I'd like to make there. I think the first one is um, the QSA team is going to work to get that done as quickly as possible. And it really is how quickly can we get to the regulatory licensing uh, approvals and so forth, right? So. Uh, and, and like, trust me, uh, I've been fingerprinted like 700 times. So all of that work is, has already started the moment we, we issued our option notice, uh, last week. Um, but, but I think the second point, which is important for investors is we need acreage to do well, really, uh, to do really well now. And then, yeah. and then QC benefits from that. Right. And so, because we already have our deal wired. And so it's not as if acreage does better. There's a different deal that gets cut. Our deal's already wired. Um, acreage performing well, really, uh, really well now has them generating more cash, maybe paying down debt, have cash to invest in in, in other things. Um, that benefit all accrues to CUSA, uh, which which is you know which is which is connected to Canopy as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to look at this, and you know, you talked off the top about having flexibility. Um, is there any like markets, you know, we've talked about Florida, you know, obviously the emergence of Pennsylvania, but any markets that, you know, you're not in right now in the U S that pique your interest as far as like, you know, moving forward, there are things that you're looking at. There's always growth States that we speak to a lot of CEOs that they keep their eyes on, but with a lot of this flexibility, we understand there's going to be a lot of distressed assets pertaining to this industry. Like, are there markets that you kind of like, just keep open, open mind, and uh, uh, I guess learn a little bit more, and that just maybe interest you in some ways. Yeah, that's a that's actually the that's the hardest question to answer because we spend the QSA board of managers spends a lot of time talking about that, right? Because we have a branded portfolio that's asset light that we want to be yeah. in every market with partners, uh, but we want to be in every market that we can be, as opposed to deploying capital into those markets. Um, I think with with acreage, which uh, which business is a little more capital intensive. The thing that I learned uh, from the Canadian experience is you need to be really focused and you need to execute in the markets that matter for you. And so from my perspective for acreage, that's that's uh, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois. Like we we've got a lot of work to do in those markets. And so from a capital standpoint, we'll stay focused on getting better in those markets and then. We'll take our branded portfolio as broadly as we can because that's not a that's not a right. big capital risk for us. Right. So what's what's next? I mean, obviously we had the CUSA announcement. We've had the CUSA exercise. We had CUSA exercising its options on the assets. Um, obviously, we've talked about strategy. We've talked about structure. Um, what, what, what what's on your roadmap? Like, what's next for the overall enterprise? And I guess CUSA. QSA at large. 
Yeah. So when I think about uh, the the CUSA board of managers, which I'm a part of, like what's next for that group is really driving operational excellence um, in every single market we're in and taking advantage of those uh, those those kind of maybe even low hanging fruit opportunities for us to 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 invest in to see really outsized growth. So that's kind of from a CUSA standpoint, from a canopy standpoint. Our medical business in Canada is doing doing really well, uh, and we're going to continue to drive that. Um, I was in Germany last week. Uh, it's really exciting to see what's happening in that market, and and even uh, taking advantage of the reputation that Canopy has in that market as actually one of the first entrants into the market, you know, many years ago, uh, and really seeing how we can we can build in that market, which should be a very uh, good growth opportunity for us, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. And then, and then, look, there are some dynamics in the Canadian market. When I come back to that and talk about the rec, uh, the rec side of that market, um, we still, you know, just last year we retooled our entire production platform. We're still kind of getting our legs under us in that in, in that environment. We we've recently launched vapes in Canada in a, yeah. in a, in a um, you know, more wholesome, uh, you know, fulsome way. Um, we've relaunched WANA in Canada, if you will, with, with, with new advanced formulation. So I think there's a lot that we can do in that market and, and keep in mind, there are, there are a lot of uh, companies that are uh, distressed in that market because the government refused to do anything on the excise tax. Yes. And maybe we don't even have to deploy capital to benefit their, uh, in that market, as we see, you know, as we see companies kind of trying to figure out how they're going to adapt their business model to survive or, or maybe exit the market. So I think there's a I can look at each component of our business and I can see, you know, tremendous opportunities for us. We just have to be we have to be smart and pick the few that matter instead of instead of trying to do everything. Yeah. Are you seeing or when you were in Germany, is there any insight you can give into how that market is growing? If they're starting to truly see the velocity pickup in prescriptions written, and if just the overall market is becoming much more efficient on the backs of them actually getting the, the legislation done and implemented? Yeah, yeah. Um, we are seeing more scripts being written now. Interestingly, the average amount is a little bit lower, but that almost okay. makes sense, right? As you say, you have more people kind of testing out the category. Um, yeah. It's pretty interesting. The, the, the real quick results that, that I see are sales of stores and Bickle devices, which, um, which are up significantly in Germany, um, which, is, which is cool, right? Because it's a German brand yeah. with German heritage. Uh, and now yeah. as we're seeing more, more uh, pharmacies um, uh, pushing product out into the marketplace, it, to me, it just makes a ton of sense to, to see the move of stores and Bickle. So it's almost like a, a derivative measure of how the market's performing, you know, in the growth that we're seeing. So when you talked about reputation in that market, obviously having a product like that, it's like, you know, from Germany um, speaks volumes in that particular case is what you're alluding to. Yeah, yeah, it does. And, um, you know, again, we've, we've, we've been, we've been in the market uh, for, for a long time in Germany probably didn't focus on it enough while we were getting our qualities uh, straight in Canada. Now we have a GMP uh, facility in King Carden that's, that's, you know, putting out great product that we want to get in the hands of, of folks in Germany. We're, we're, we're launching our, um, our Tweed brand in Germany. Up to this point, it's been branded, okay. uh, you know, Spectrum Medical and then Canopy Medical. We're launching our Tweed brand in, in Germany with a product that's sourced in the EU. Beautiful looking bud. I uh, saw the uh, saw some of the product last week. So yeah, a lot of opportunity in that market. Great. Tweed and the Germans should be fun. Should be fun. Yeah. Well, listen, a lot of like on the plate, but these are all good things in the right direction. But I think the big thing that we wanted to have you on is just get an understanding of this ATM. So hopefully our viewers got a little bit of better understanding the flexibility because there's a lot of moving parts. There's no ending story to this right now. There's a lot of moving parts and more things to come and materialize pertaining to your story, especially when you look at the U.S. market and how that's going to plan to unfold. But um, we've reached, and what was it yesterday, Anthony? Uh, 17,000 public comments about rescheduling. Yes. And, and 97% are positive, which is encouraging to say the least. But I think overall, I'm sure you haven't followed it that much, uh, David, but uh, it, it's looking and beginning to feel more and more a reality that we will get rescheduling announced prior to the election, which is great for the industry, right? 
It, it is. And, you know, it's it's uh, um, I was in Quebec yesterday at a, at a uh, kind of industry conference that included medical professionals and government professionals. Uh, um, and I think the thing that's happening is just a bit of normalization. Some things that we wouldn't really yeah. even talk about with the uh, with government regulators before are now just feeling like normal and uh, you know, Canada kind of led the world and uh, at least from a G7 standpoint and yeah. driving forward with this legalization or normalization at a regulatory level. But the U.S. is the is the is the kind of the linchpin here, like the U.S. needs to move. And it does feel like like that's uh, like like that's uh, going to happen. And yeah, it's exciting times. And, you know, I want to I want to come back to the ATM. It's it's why we want to make sure that we have. Uh, you know, we have some dry powder to, to take advantage of moves in the in the market. And I want to assure our investors that, you know, unlike in the past where Canopy was, uh, I would say, uh, uh, undisciplined in terms of maybe how we deployed our capital. Yes. Uh, we, we will be, you know, laser focused on what we do uh, and ensuring that it's uh, that it's return generating for our investors. So it's a different world. It's a different world for us. Yeah. It's a different world for the industry at this point. I think that's well said. Good thing, like elected transparency. But yeah, I can understand where people's concerns are in the past, but good for you to outline where we are today and what we plan to do moving forward to make sure that whatever we do and move forward is a calculated effort and is the right one and timings everything. So I think that's uh, the big takeaway here today. Listen, tell the crew we say hi. Best of luck uh, moving forward. We did actually interview Kate Oles from Acreage last week, and we promised her that we're going to be at the Michigan-Ohio State game next November. <laughs> I saw that, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> you, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm more of an NFL person, so I stay out of all these little petty fights Dave, between Dave, the you, states. But... You've got to experience one of those games once. <laughs> it is unreal. But uh, brave person to show up with maize and blue colors in Columbus next year. But either way, it should be <laughs> yeah. fun. We'll bring some footage and, uh, yeah, look forward to filming. Well, uh, maybe I'll just head to the dispensaries and see what happens <laughs> yeah. uh, leading up to Same. the game. <laughs> Same stuff. Well, big opportunity in the Ohio market. And I think a lot of people are anxious to see that go live and see some of the numbers. And uh, hopefully in a lot of ways it uh, resembles, and if not bigger numbers from what Maryland, how it came roaring out of the gate a year ago at this time. But uh, all eyes on Ohio here in the short term. And then uh, it'll probably shift over to Florida come the fall. But uh these are all good things. Lots of conversations happening for the industry. So, let's appreciate the time. Let's keep in touch, and uh, we will follow up with you soon again, okay? Great. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Thanks, Thanks David. Thanks, sir. What is going on, everyone? What would you all think of the interview? Did you like it? Leave some comments below. This industry, it's heating up. So, if there's any information that you want us to cover off, we will do it. As this industry builds up more and more momentum, we want to be here for you. And we want to take this viral. So make sure to smash that like button. Click on that bell for notifications. And please, as usual, we wouldn't be here without you if you didn't subscribe. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching.